I'm James Hamilton, Vice President and Distinguished Engineer at Amazon Web Services. I spent probably 10 years or so at IBM working on high-scale servers. I've spent 13 years at Microsoft doing much the same thing, and I've been at Amazon for the last four years working on cloud services in AWS. Through that period, probably actually since 2007, I've been working on microservers and spending time on writing about them and, and, and spending time understanding the impact of focusing on price performance and power performance over top of absolute performance and what it can do to lower the cost of offering server workloads. Microservers really have a case built on four basic tenets. Number one, volume economics. Rather than draw on the volume economics of what is a relatively small server market, we draw on the volume economics of the entire device market. And by devices, I mean cell phones, of course, laptops, tablets, and client systems. Just to give you an idea of the size of this market and why it's more than a percentage here or there, why it's really a fundamental difference, we've got the server market this year will do 3.2 million units sold. That's an astronomical number. It's a wonderful number. We should all be really proud of it. But the device market will do 1.2 billion. That's a thousand X bigger. And one thing I've learned over working in this industry for close to 30 years now is volume economics drives innovation, and innovation almost always wins. Some examples. IBM mainframes, when I was working at IBM back in the mid 80s, ran almost every important server workload there was, and yet they were swept aside by what at the time were slightly lower performance risk processors running Unix. More competition, more innovation, faster pace, and most important, more volumes meant Unix systems took over. I loved them. I ported databases to almost every major Unix processor there was. And it turns out I was on the wrong side of that one. Client side volumes won again. x86 processors swept the Unix systems aside. And that's where we are right now. Almost always, volume economics wins over, over the smaller volume server space. Invariably, what happens is if you look at the, if you look at the pyramid of, of, of applications, where the ones we talk about and the ones we focus on are the very highest performance, most sensitive, most important to the industry, and the bottom of, of the stack are the least relevant but, but most plentiful. It turns out there's relatively small data, a small number of database systems and a huge number of systems down here. What usually happens is these, these lower, less demanding systems give way, the new technology gets a toehold, and then immediately the volumes go up and it takes over the rest of the market. We've seen it happen almost once a decade for as long as I've been around, and I fully expect we're, it's gonna happen again here. The drivers behind this, second driver, CPU bound. A lot of process, I mean, we, we spend time talking about CPU. CPU is super important. Most servers are not CPU bound. There's two drivers of this. The first one is imbalanced systems. And that is most CPUs, most, most systems are waiting on the network, or they're waiting on the disk, or they're waiting on memory. And waiting on memory, memory bound, is, is sometimes harder to understand what's really happening. It can look CPU bound. Let me tell you what I mean by that. Most processors today in the server world are capable of many instructions every processor cycle. This is what's referred to as, as superscalar. Because these superscalar systems can execute multiple instructions every cycle, we have a measure called IPC, instructions per cycle. Every processor is capable of more than one instruction per cycle, many and yet many workloads run less than one instruction per cycle. And the reason for it is they're waiting on memory. The operating system graph that shows CPU load will show 100%, but in fact the processor is waiting on memory. If you take that system and add more CPU, spend more money adding, adding more CPU, you'll get more CPU, you'll get more power, but you'll get not one iota more performance. That's one class. The second class is simply some workloads are just not very demanding. They don't need any more CPU. Again, you can spend more on CPU. You will get more CPU, but it won't do anything for the application load itself. So the second big driver is many apps don't need the CPU performance that's there today. And in fact, they're spending too much on it. 
That's one of the things that's driving the excitement industry-wide on virtualization. It's the realization that there's a vast quantity of resources that people are paying for, but not getting any value from. Third big driver, price performance. This is a super important one for me. It's a lot of what I work on. Device price performance is far better than current generation server performance. Again, let's, let's take an example to motivate this. A server CPU today runs hundreds of dollars. If you're buying a high bin part, as much as $1,000. The, the processor in a Samsung or Apple iPhone is an ARM device, and it's $15. $15 versus hundreds of dollars. Completely different price performance perspective. My general rule of thumb, and this is one that's not 100% not true, but generally, the rule I use is a quarter of the, the processing rate for one-tenth the cost. A quarter to a tenth. This is super important. And what's even more interesting is the, the processing rate is going up all the time. Modern, modern cell phones are extraordinarily demanding, and as a consequence of being extraordinarily demanding, there's the, the, the performance of these parts are increasing all the time. And so that number's closing. At the same time, the one-tenth number is not changing one iota. And so what's going to happen is we're going to see that bottom tier, for the reasons I told you, populated with these new parts, and it migrate up stack. Number four, the fourth big factor playing here that makes microservers interesting is power performance. And this is an area where the industry is spending a lot of time right now, and, a lot, and, just, and, and it's really a focus. Partly because power is a social issue, and partly because power is a, is, is a price issue. The most important driver of the cost of a modern data center is power. And so anything we can do to lower the power for a given amount of work done is extraordinarily valuable. And nowhere is there a richer R&D stream on power performance and power optimization than in the cell phone world. That ecosystem is driving some of the best innovations possible in, in, in power and power performance. And in fact, a little secret, I've always used the, what's happening in the cell phone world as a predictor of what's coming in the server world. Technologies that show up first in the cell phone world end up in the server world. And knowing that is one of the reasons why I focus on understanding that market and knowing where it's going, it's because it's really, that's telling me where the server world's going. There's huge volume economics behind the ARM market. There's huge innovation behind the ARM market. So build on that ecosystem. At the same time, they're leveraging the advanced micro devices experience and building server CPUs for many, many, many years. Bringing those two together and building a server optimized part, not a part aimed at a cell phone, doesn't, won't include a radio stack. It's taking technology that's there in volume today and is changing and growing and improving incredibly fast with existing server expertise.